Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Sue Cancer Vet, but you know that, but I have a very special Yay. guest. This is the awesome, the incredible Dr. Lisa Lippman. Thank you. Hi guys. And this is Chloe, my angel. I love her so much. This Just like you guys love your pets at home, so she's a good dog. She is my new BFF. Yeah. We have been bonding. <laughs> Because we just did a podcast. I think That's right. every time you do a podcast, you should have a dog on your lap. Yeah, it's a requirement, especially for a pet podcast. So you guys should listen. I asked Dr. Sue my own personal questions about Chloe and things that I think she might be prone to. Uh, so you guys should definitely tune in. It's called Pets and Punchlines, and we will do a lot of advertisement when it when it's out. So you can ask from vet to vet, my own personal questions um, that Dr. Sue answered for me. Thank you so much. So what we're gonna do today is, I thought this would be a great opportunity. So, you know, we always talk about cancer on on the Dr. Sue Cancer channel, but today we're gonna just talk about some of the th the other topics that we, two yep. veterinarians, want you guys as pet owners to know about your pet's health. So we're just gonna run through a couple of those things today, and I hope you find they're helpful. Yeah. Definitely put some comments below. Tell us what you think about it. Chloe, what do you think <laughs> about it? She's ready. So, should we start with our yeah, first one? Yeah, what's, okay. what's your first so one? So, first one that I would love everybody to know is that a dry nose in a dog just means that they have a dry nose. It doesn't necessarily mean anything about their health, actually. So, um, if your dog is not eating, not drinking, really lethargic, not doing well, and has a dry nose, then it might be time to go right. to a vet. Um, but a dry nose in and of itself really is not an indicator of pet health at all. I know, and it's one so, of those those, those questions even, we get asked yeah. all the time. I don't even know where that like wives tale started yeah. from. Yeah, I was gonna say it's so like an old. urban legend. Yeah, it's so old, but who knows where it even started, but it really yeah. doesn't mean much, you guys. So. so we don't really care about the dry nose. Don't care. We care more about the other health <laughs> questions. So yeah. again, eating, drinking, activity, um, energy, yep. Yep. other things Making like that. Make sure they don't have lumps and bumps. Yeah. Which brings us to my favorite second one. That's my favorite one is why weight aspirate. So you guys know how I feel about lumps and bumps, and I will use every opportunity uh, to remind everybody how important it is to make sure. So we were just talking about this with Chloe. Chloe will never get cancer. <laughs> She's not allowed to get cancer, just like Matilda right. and Penelope. But once a month, we want to feel our dogs from nose to tail um, for any lumps and bumps. And you guys remember what my guidelines are. If the mass is the size of a P. And been there a month. Yay! <laughs> Go to your veterinarian. Um, also on my webpage, Dr. Sue Cancer Vet, in the pet resources section, we have a, do you know this? Did I tell you this? We have skin maps for pet oh, owners. So dog yeah. and cat yes. skin maps. So, you know, you don't you have draw. to remember, is it right. on the right? Is it on the left? Is yep. it on the top? Is it on the bottom? So you can actually mark where it is, which is super cool. Yeah. And then when you go to veterinarian, yes. you don't have to remember where it that. is. What I tell people too sometimes, and you tell me if you hate this, but um, I, sometimes I will tell, like, if they have short fur, you can actually circle it with yeah. a Sharpie. Yeah, absolutely. So I always tell people, like, if you find it next time, just circle with a Sharpie. It's on their fur. And yeah. It's totally safe. Um, and then you can find it really easily because people do come to me sometimes and say, oh, I don't know where it is now. Um, and they, and then they often and think it. it's on the right, but then yeah. they realized it was the dog's left because they were looking at them. Right. And I'll be honest, so Matilda now has had both of her knees done, oh, both wow. TPLs. Oh. But for a while, after she had one done four years ago, I'm a veterinarian, and even I couldn't remember which knee yeah. was yeah. done. So sometimes it's remembering hard. right and left in yeah. our pets is we have yeah. so much going on. Yeah. So use the skin maps, but again, if the mass is the size of a pea and been there a month, go to your veterinarian and expect them to do an aspirate. I can't look at a mass. Dr. Lisa can't look at a mass right. and know what it is. So we have to do that aspirate. And it's really easy. We stick a needle in. We're going to collect some cells, look at them under a microscope, or send them to the lab and we will hopefully find out that it's benign. The cool thing is 60 to 80% are benign, but we don't want to play the odds, right? No, right? No, there's no reason to do that. Right. Yeah, well, especially if it's malignant, early, yeah. we can remove it. Right, and it can be cured of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Dr. Sue taught me that. Yeah. Um, what else? What, what else do you want everyone to know? And I think also along the cancer lines that vomiting in cats is not normal. So a lot of people come to me and say, oh, they're just eating too fast or, um, you know, they just vomit every once in a while and they're fine. And I know it seems that way because they're kind of fine in between and they go about their business. Um, but that's actually not true. So do you want to tell them about the study that? Yeah. Doing? So, I, and it's the same thing. I mean, I, I, grew up in, yeah, like even in vet school, it's just, it was sort of, ex yeah. especially if they were a long haired cat, like, yeah. oh, they're just vomiting hairballs. But there was this study that came out 
I want to say in like 2012 or 2013, but they looked at 100 cats that had chronic vomiting, diarrhea, diarrhea and weight loss, and or weight loss. And the weight loss was only a pound over a couple of months, a couple of times of vomiting and or diarrhea that had an ultrasound that was abnormal that went on and had surgical biopsies of their intestines. 99 of 100 kitties either had inflammatory bowel disease or lymphoma. It's crazy. So yeah. it really, and tw oh, the other thing I didn't tell you about the study is a quarter of the cats were going to their vet for routine exams. So they were not yeah. even going in for being sick. So it really goes that it's so important that we as veterinarians get a really good history. Yeah. And what's more important is us as pet owners to acknowledge that it's not normal yeah. for cats to be vomiting. And yeah. I even tell my clients, if your cat is a vomiter and you think it's not that often, just start circling it on your calendar. Yeah. Because you will be surprised. Yep, you will exactly. be surprised how frequent it is. Yeah, I do the same thing. So yeah, keep a log if you think your pet's vomiting. I mean, once a week, once a month, once a year. I mean, once a year might not be cause for concern. Yeah. But do they give, didn't the study all, how often? I mean, once a week's way too much. Once yeah. a month's way. I always tell people also, it wouldn't be normal if you were eye vomited once a week or right. once a month. It's certainly right. not normal if they do it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's Ellen. Hey, Ellen. So I went to high school with Ellen. Hi, so she Ellen. just hopped on. Thanks for Yay. joining. Um, our 10-year-old boxer has been fighting cancer for nine months and she has it on her upper lip and, ah, and it just went. So guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back later and I'm going to answer questions. And so the cat vomiting log is a great idea. Yeah, it really, really is. Um, and I'll be honest. So the other thing that Dr. Lisa and I were just talking about is I deal with chronic headaches and my neurologist makes me keep a log of my, and you know, of my headaches um, and how often I'm taking medication and things like that. And yeah. it really is when you have it visually in front of you. So different than you think. Yeah. It, yeah. it really changes yeah. your impression of how frequent or infrequent frequent something is yeah speaking of headaches and pain the other thing we were talking about was how to recognize pain in pets um, so this, hard yeah it can be a really tricky one um, because sometimes obviously I, I ask them to use their words all the time but they just don't um, and so a lot of times you know we can see that with behavioral changes in pets so if they're not getting up to greet you at the door like normal or they're not jumping on and off the bed like normal or they just don't want to move uh, like normal if they have behavioral changes like aggression if you touch them certain places um, what's our other good ones there's well, you know what's really hard is so I see one of the extreme pain examples that mm -hmm. I see are dogs that have bone cancer, right? And oh, it's yeah. typically in their legs. Right. And owners have such a hard time sort of acknowledging. Yeah. Um, and so they walk fine on three they legs. They walk fine on three yeah. legs. And they're eating. And they're wagging their mm -hmm. tail. And I have to tell them, like, how painful it is when the cancer is eating away at their bone. And then going back to Matilda, so she tore her second cruciate. Right. And it took us a couple of weeks to get the surgery scheduled with my friend who's an awesome board-certified surgeon. And she was not weight bearing most of the time. Right. And she was happy and eating and the happiest Labrador you ever know. And it made me really appreciate how hard it was for, right. I was like, but she's so happy. Yeah. Look at her, she's eating. And I said, this is exactly what owners go through yeah. when we tell them that they're, because I knew she yeah. was in pain, but she she's was not so, using her leg and that's, right. that's pain. That's right. not But she was so yeah. happy otherwise. And so I think that's why it's so hard and yeah. so if the pain's internal maybe in the abdomen like how do we know if our pets are cramping and so right. again some of the things that you talked about are really so good behavioral clues. changes yeah yeah so it can be very subtle but I would say definitely know your pet you know again if they're not eating if they're not acting like themselves if they're behaving abnormally um, yeah if they're using if they're not using limbs like they should be using if there's any change in them at all so always, and I think yeah. sometimes it's almost parents intuition yeah and so sure. you know if you feel like something's wrong and you know sometimes I get messages from people say my vet said it's nothing to worry about but I'm really really worried and I said sometimes you just have to trust your instinct even though your instinct might yeah. be wrong if you don't feel good about it go back to the yeah. vet um, you got to be your pet's own yeah. advocate that's Absolutely. what I think that's what I always tell people is that you know them better than anyone. Absolutely. So, yeah, just keep pushing and yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's a good one. Um, let's see, what else do we have on the list? Oh, what's oh, one of your pet peeves? Uh, vacation sedation. Uh, so <laughs> that sounds lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's different. <laughs> it's different. I think oh, we're not talking about that vacation sedation. <laughs> I, I think it is different in pets. Um, you know, 
a lot of people say, oh, I'm traveling and, you know, what can I do to sort of sedate my pet? Like it's, you know, it's not a quick fix though is what I always warn everybody. So there are medications that we can use. If so you're, you're talking really about nervous. if somebody's like going, taking their dog on a plane yeah. or in the car with them? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So if they're taking, an, uh, yeah, any, any kind of travel like that. Um, and what I find for airplane travel actually is that how dogs do in the car is usually how they do in the plane even better. They don't seem to experience those pressure changes like we get. Uh -huh. Um, and, uh, and that sedation can actually have the opposite effect. Yeah. Sometimes it can have, they make them feel funny and they get a paradoxical excitatory effect. And then it just, it doesn't, it, it's having completely the opposite effect. And then you're stuck on a plane, um, or in a car with an animal who's just over way over excited. So I always say, if you are going to try something, definitely talk to your vet, um, and try it like a night or two or try it well before you leave so that you know how your pet reacts to it and you're not giving it in a stressful situation. Uh, so yeah, so it, it can be helpful in certain situations, but it can make certain situations worse. So definitely talk to your vet about it. Yeah. And that's uh, great because these are things that I don't often have to, yeah. <laughs> I don't deal with. So this is great information for me. Yeah. And so let's see. Uh, do you ever, I mean, do you ever have to sedate an animal for like treatment, like chemo or radiation? Like if they're not good, if they're stressed in the hospital or like gabapentin with cats? Yeah, or... so we I definitely believe in fear-free. So we want to make the coming yeah. to the vet hospital as stress-free for the patient as possible. Uh, we will use a little bit of sedation to make the treatment less stressful. What I'm surprised, and most owners, I, I guess I'm not surprised after doing this for so many years, but I think pet owners will be surprised is that most animals find coming to chemo, their chemotherapy treatments pretty stress-free because yeah. they don't get sick during the treatment. So in people, they often get anticipatory nausea. Oh. So they will drive into the chemo clinic parking lot and get sick because maybe they got sick before. Most of my pets walk, my pets, right. the patients walk in and they're wagging their tail and they're pretty happy and we give them lots of love and yeah. treats. So usually we don't have to sedate them. Where we may need to sedate them would be for things like chest x-rays or ultrasound right. where you know ultrasound sometimes they have to lay on their back for a little bit longer yeah. um, obviously for ct scans are going to be anesthetized radiation is done under anesthesia right. so that's so going to be yeah. yeah but um you know i'm not against giving dogs some sedation if like to make x-rays less stressful because yeah. some dogs don't want to be you know lay on their side and they yeah. have to lay on their back so i would rather give a little bit of sedation take yeah. the edge off Totally. It makes it safer for my team, yeah. for the nurses and the assistants, and it makes yeah. it safer for the pet. Yeah, and speaking of that, we have much reliable, when we're able to give things injectively, it's much more reliable sedation than a lot of the oral medications yeah. that we get for traveling. So it's, it's different. Yeah. So guys, we're in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're wondering what that background noise, I'm happily uh, visiting Dr. Lisa in yeah. New York City. <laughs> we're on the Upper West Side, yeah. um, and the sirens are blaring. So you, you, just, want... you just get immune to it when yeah. you live in the city. Yeah. <laughs> I lived in if the city ever... for about five years and yeah it's great though I wouldn't have it any other way right now no any let's other see. tips do we talk about hydrogen peroxide no th I was gonna say that's one of your pet that's peeves one of mine. yeah so um we don't need hydrogen peroxide to clean out wounds so hydrogen peroxide um it burns wait wait and, we have oh. to say hi to Kristen from Australia, hi, Kristen from Australia. and she's saying good morning oh, good morning it's the afternoon morning. or actually it's, it's it. almost dinner time here it's almost happy hour but <laughs> It's quite possible our happy hour started it's at happy lunchtime. Happy hour is not every, somewhere, it's always somewhere happy. 5 o'clock, right? 5 o'clock, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, I think it's the thing. Yeah. It's 5.45. Perfect. Okay. Um, Hi, Kristen. <laughs> Thanks Hi, for Kristen. joining. Yeah, all the way from down under. From down under, yeah. So fun. Have she's you been? A, no. Oh, that's on my yeah. bucket list, but she's a big Rob Thomas fan. Oh, amazing. She's part of the Rob Thomas family. Sure. I mean, he's amazing. Mm-hmm. So okay, hydrogen peroxide. Oh, hydrogen peroxide. We got distracted. So, oh yes, <laughs> like we do. Um, <laughs> we get very distracted. So, yeah. um, right. So hydrogen peroxide it burns wounds and it actually prevents cell healing. So there's no reason oh, wait. to use. Oh, that's my dad. Hi, dad. Hi, dad. Yay! He's my oh, shipping that's department. So sweet. <laughs> I love that. Oh, and we have Maui, Hawaii. There, there. Oh. I have been. We're never going to talk about so hydrogen peroxide. Maui. Oh yeah, well, no, we're never talking about hydrogen peroxide. No, Hi, no, Maui. Maui. Uh, and dad. Aloha, and my dad. 
<laughs> I love that it's your shipping and part. What does he ship for you? Oh, so my calipers. So yeah. um, it's not a very big company. So we do ship calipers, the digital calipers, yes. which I sent. Yes, so fancy, you guys. I love they're them. So, they're somewhere in this. Totally get up and they're show somewhere too, in the seven hundred really square hard foot to get up. Yeah. apartment <laughs> in New York City. But so the digital calipers and uh, plastic calipers and caliper pen, which we sell on Dr. Sue Cantor Vet and Dr. Sue 2019 will give you 15% off. Ooh. Always okay. a little code. Oh, okay, got it. So, and also what about, you said the pens, right? They're your caliper so, pens. So, yeah, so easy to use. So I'm sure you guys know what calipers are because you follow Dr. Sue all the time, but just in case for my own sake or right, you my talk followers about, are following. You talk, is, about, um, you talk about hydrogen peroxide for a second. Oh, uh, well, I was just, the calipers, oh, I think she's going to show. Does she, do you carry it in your purse with you ever to lunch? So <laughs> that is amazing. So Wait, these are the caliper pens. Chloe was we're looking to be measured. Right so now. I say my glasses are about three centimeters oh, from there. Can we measure okay. your eye? No. Yeah. How about we measure your nose? Your nose <laughs> is three point six centimeters. Whoa! It is. It's perfect. <laughs> your nose is perfect. Yee, you are so. This is a pen and a caliper, and I'm such a geek. So I love yeah, I'm that actually surprised so at lunch I forgot to take them out and like measure a beat. We were having <laughs> beets at lunch or a French fry. I love that so much. Missed opportunity. Yeah. But I love that. That's great. And so you guys can, yeah, it's a really great way to measure measure masses with the skin map. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, I will not interrupt you. Oh, <laughs> hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> um, I think I started saying half of it. Maybe one of you guys can repeat it for me. But so uh, hydrogen peroxide is. Hi Walter. It burns. Hi Walter. Um, it burns and it actually prevents cell healing. And um, water has great healing properties. So if you have a wound and you have, I mean, saline is great, but also most people don't have access to that. Then. Water is great, so just flush the wound with lots of, lots of water. The only thing hydrogen peroxide is good for is, I was gonna say making pets vomit, but <laughs> Dr. Sue said also it's part of an amazing. It's a part of an remedy. amazing home remedy or home formula for if your dog gets skunked. <laughs> um, so this is one time that I will encourage you to use Google. Yeah. And if your dog gets skunked, but it's hydrogen peroxide, I think baking soda and some dish soap. Yeah. And interestingly, they recommend um, Dawn soap. It's and I one time did it with Method, and didn't it didn't work as well. <laughs> but you mix that up, and so Matilda, my dog that's had multiple TPLO surgeries, um, also happens to love skunks, and it's <laughs> always nine o'clock at night or ten o'clock at of night. Course because skunks are nocturnal. Um, she loves Pepe Le Pew, who lives in our backyard. <laughs> and so we now always have hydrogen peroxide because otherwise you have to find like a right. Walgreens or a CVS or something that's open. So hydrogen peroxide, to, good for skunks, not for wounds. Not tomato juice. Uh, no. Who really does nothing. Because, well, and then the other thing is she, we have white walls in our yeah. bathroom. She would Such shake disaster, and it would make yeah. a mess. But it doesn't, it doesn't work. So yeah. follow, find that skunk formula. It's the best one for sure. All right, so those are our top tips that these yeah. two veterinarians want you to know for your pet's health. Health. We hope that you <laughs> found it helpful. Most importantly, yeah. we now know how big your nose is, Chloe. Yeah. We love you. Hey, all right. Thanks, uh, oh, and oh. Uh, Chantel was from Paris, by the way. So we had quite the international wow. audience today. That's amazing. Thank you guys so much for joining. Guys, if you think any of this information will be helpful, please tag a friend below that helps get this information out to our friends. We will be reposting this onto YouTube and you know, what do I want you to do? Share. Share and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you so much guys. Thanks, guys. Have a super fantastic, Bye. what is today? Uh, Thursday. So <laughs> TGIT, have a great weekend and we'll see you back Bye. here soon. Bye guys. Okay, now for the awkward part. <laughs>